Hey guys, it's Lance at Max Sound Solutions, and B-Link sent over another one of their enclosures. This is the Mate Mini A version. I have the Mate Mini B version already. I've been using it for like two weeks. You can watch that review up here, but today we're gonna be checking out the A version, and you can get a chance to win one of these at the end of the video. So stay tuned, watch the video, and the instructions will be at the end, or you can jump forward for your chance to win a B-Link Mate Mini a unit. We'll just do a quick unboxing and just for those who don't know the A unit holds two NVMEs while the B unit only holds one NVME otherwise they're identical. The speeds are different with the drives but the ports are the same. They come with these little USB-C Thunderbolt cables so you can have it sit directly under your Mac Mini or on top of your Mac Mini. Both units come with two USB-A ports, a headphone jack, a 2.5 gigahertz Ethernet Ethernet port and the port to connect it to your Mac Mini via USB-C, which is Thunderbolt 5, and it has an additional power port, plus it has an SDXC card reader on the side of the unit. And you just remove eight Phillips screws. It's good to have a magnetic screwdriver because those little guys in there are a little hard to get out, but it was pretty easy. And B-Link sells them with NVMEs or you can buy it for a mere $139, so reasonable, without any NVMEs and put your own in. And when you first take off the plastic cover, there's an important note in there that states you must put SSD one in first if you're gonna use just one SSD. If you're using two and you're putting them in at the same time, it doesn't matter. But if you're only gonna start with one SSD and add a second one later, it's gotta go into slot one. And you can see it's got a fan and it's virtually silent. You have to put your ear up against the enclosure to even hear it. It's very, very quiet. And just so you know, both units do have the Intel JHL9480 Thunderbolt 5 controller. So they are Thunderbolt 5, but they don't have DisplayPort capabilities or daisy chain which you have to have to get Thunderbolt 5 certification. Personally, I really like Western Digital SN850Xs. What I found out about these Oricos, and I had these lying around, so I thought I'd just use them, and their speeds are good, but they're designed completely different. They do not match. Even though they've got the same sticker by Orico on them, you will see that they look totally different. Their PCBs are totally different. Therefore, they are not made by the same manufacturer. Orico just buys them from other manufacturers. They do not make their own NVMEs. So let's get to some speed tests. First up, RAID 0. And of course, RAID 0 is risky, but it's fast. So if one drive goes down, you lose the data on both drives and of course you always want to have a constant backup situation with a RAID 0. So while you benefit from the speed you also run a higher risk of failure. And if you want to run Mac OS on the external drive, you can't do it in RAID 0. It is not supported by Apple. And here we are with Blackmagic Speed Disk Test, and you can see we're getting just what we get with the B unit. The B unit supports these speeds with a single NVMe because it's not sharing the Thunderbolt bus with two NVMEs. So the only way you're going to get these speeds with the A unit is to do a RAID 0. And looking at the temperatures, we hit 49 centigrade, and it's typical for a RAID 0 to have one drive that runs hotter than the other one. And we'd have to hit around 70 centigrade for this thing to throttle, so we're well below that. And we'll just run amorphous disk mark and see what kind of speeds we get with this. So the RAID 0 takes the win for the largest file sizes, the read and the write, but the Mac Mini M4 Pro internal SSD wins on the random 4K, the smaller files. And the single Western Digital in the B unit winds up somewhere in the middle. Now I remove the RAID and turn them into two separate NVMEs, and this is the average speeds we're getting on both drives. Pretty much the same on each one. And just to show you the base model Mac Mini with the B-Link A unit in a RAID 0 is getting what you would expect, which is the maximum you can get out of a Thunderbolt 4 bus. You're getting 3,000 megabytes read and write. But if you were to have two separate drives on two separate Thunderbolt ports, you could then also get 6,000 megabytes per second with the base model Mac Mini, which I did a video on. You can click on that here if you're interested. 
Now, of course, to get true Thunderbolt 5 speeds between two drives, they both have to be running at the full 80 gigabits per second Thunderbolt 5 speeds. And that's exactly what I have going on here. So I'm transferring 400 gigs from the B-Link Mate Mini B unit to my Mate Mini A unit. The A unit's in a RAID 0. So it is also getting that 6,000 megabytes per second max write speed. And you can see we're getting around 5 gigabytes gigabytes per second, you know, it's bouncing around because their Final Cut Pro libraries, they've got a lot of little files, big files, you know, you name it, metadata, but this is cranking along 400 gigs in a minute and 27 seconds. That is pretty amazing. That means we could copy a terabyte in under four minutes. So then I got rid of the RAID and I put them back into individual drives in the A unit and I tried copying to each one of them and it did the 400 and now 20 gigs worth of data in about two minutes and 35 seconds. One was slightly longer than the other, but they were really close and they held their own. They kept a solid 3000 megabytes per second write speed, the entire transfer. No throttling, cache didn't get full and it didn't switch to the slower speed. It just stayed solid the whole way. And of course, you know, once you get a lot of data on a drive, you're not gonna have as fast a speeds as when you have it pretty empty. So just to talk about the temperatures a little bit here, you can see the top Orico runs hotter than the bottom one by quite a bit, almost 20 Celsius. Of course, it just finished doing that transfer. So that's gonna make it run hotter whenever you're writing to the disk, that's when it starts to get hot and potentially throttle. But even when both NVMEs were idle, the bottom one was always about 10 Celsius cooler. So it sits at like 38, 39, and the top one sits more like at 49, 50. And that really comes down to the fact that they're manufactured by different companies. I tried swapping the positions in the enclosure and that made no difference. The top one was still the hotter NVMe, but even the hotter one did not throttle during the large transfer. So I had my B unit off to the side to see if it would run cooler and it did run cooler and then I put it on and it ran hotter. Now of course I'm editing video off it but the reality is is like I would not keep these units under the Mac Mini because NVMEs get super hot and that's normal. The case itself is a heat sink but that heat is going to rise up into your Mini. The Mini's fan is going to suck it into the Mini and make the Mini that much hotter. So I would not do that. I would either have it on on top with a little rubber feet like I did. I added feet to mine to get it risen up off the mini and to get airflow circulating underneath the unit and so that the fan that it has can pull in cooler air. But it's the same problem really because the NVMe is now sucking in the heat from the mini. So best case scenario is to really set it aside with a long Thunderbolt cable, you know, just a one footer or whatever, not have it sitting on top of the mini either. And I certainly wouldn't stack two of these up like I showed earlier in the video. I just did that sort of for fun because it looked cool. But if you're doing any kind of heavy lifting, you really don't want the NVMe sitting on top of the mini because both units are going to run hotter. But even with the unit on top like I have it, it did not throttle during a sustained transfer. And your mileage will vary depending on what NVMe's you're using. So all you gotta do for a chance to win a B-Link A unit is subscribe to my channel, subscribe to the B-Link official channel, which I have the link in the video description, and leave a comment here in the comments on why you think you should win the B-Link A unit. Be sure to click the bell icon down below to get notified when we post the winner. All right, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, give me that thumbs up. And I'll see you on the next Max Sound Solutions video.